Hi guys, welcome. My name is Pablo and I thought I'd take you for a little golf cart tour of Palmas del Mar here in sunny Puerto Rico. My phone away and let's get started. Woohoo! All right. So uh, I mentioned my name is Pablo. However, I you may notice from my accent, I'm from Canada and I've been visiting Palmas del Mar, but uh, in the process process of relocating from Canada to Palmas del Mar, and I've been here since Christmas time, so three months now, and I've learned a little bit, so I thought I'd give you a little tour. So this is the community uh, within community within the community. It's called Crescent Cove, and that's where I'm staying right now. So Crescent Cove, and I'm gonna go out of Crescent Cove all the way to the Palmanova Plaza, show you the Palmanova Plaza, and then I'm gonna go to the beach, do some snorkeling, and then I'm gonna go show you another beach. It's gonna be a fun day. Now you'll see all these little uh, secondary paths. You can see the primary is where the cars go, and this secondary path is only for golf carts and pedestrians and cyclists and everybody else. So it's kind of a fun uh, way to get around the community. I find it actually way more convenient to um, drive a golf cart around and park and everything than it is to take a car most of the time. In fact, I don't even own a car. I just have a golf cart and that gets me around for 95% of what I need to do. And if I ever need to get into town, I'll either borrow a car or just go and rent one at the Target, which is also in Palmas del Mar. On the left hand side is the Wyndham Hotel, and that's one of the main hotels here in Thomas Del Mar that guests can stay at. And on the left here is the golf course, and it flows right through across the road here. Uh, there's actually two golf courses, so that's the Palms Golf Course, and then there's also Flamboyen. Both of them are 18 hole championship courses, and they're great. They're definitely like top five in Puerto Rico for golf courses and you know I, I don't know the names of all the little communities and I haven't certainly shown you everything we just passed by the tennis club it's the largest tennis facility in the Caribbean it's huge it's massive it's awesome there's pickleball there's tennis there's a beach club there's uh, uh, beach restaurants there's a tennis restaurant there's a fitness facility it's there's just about everything in Columbus it's amazing so um, yeah I love this road here because on the right there's a little bit of like a, a wetlands or something in there and so it's very heavily treed and at night when you're driving through this section you can hear this very loud local frog called the Kukui they say it coquit because that's the sound it makes. It goes, it makes this cute little whistle noise, and they call it a coquit. And it's uh, very, very loud. A little bit scary the first time you visit because it's so loud, but um, you get really used to it very quickly. Uh, this development on the left is so cool because um, what I love about it is every season they have really amazing decorations. They light up the front gate. And it's kind of a gated community within a gated community. So Palmas del Mar is in Puerto Rico, obviously, and it's around 45 minutes from the airport in San Juan. And it's a gated community. So you come in through the gate and then you go into secondary gated communities in often cases. So there's single family homes, there's town homes, and then there's little gated communities within. Uh, you notice I just crossed the road. When crossing the road in Puerto Rico with a golf cart, it's uh, generally the cars that have the right of way. However, it's kind of like you, you pull up in your golf cart and a lot of times the cars will stop and let you through. Um, so it's kind of, it's just, you know, everything in Puerto Rico, it's like the people are super duper friendly. The 
traffic is light, there's nobody that's got a sense of urgency, there's nobody in a big dither about anything. Everybody is just chill. Right? It's I mean, how could you how could you get aggravated living here? Look at this place. It's gorgeous, right? So now we're gonna head up the hill and we have to go up the hill, turn left, and we'll go down the hill towards the Palmanova Plaza, which is close to the ocean. See, sometimes it gets a little tight with all the golf carts. We get uh, golf cart rush hour in the late afternoons and evenings, but uh, we make do. As we get to the very top here, you'll see it gets quite narrow. And so, you know, I stopped for that golf cart, and that golf cart stopped for me, and we both had to do the you go, no, you go, no, you go. Very so late. get to the top here you'll see that the uh, golf cart in front of us they kept going on the main road and we're going to take a sharp left here down towards the plaza so test my turning radius yeah. Yeah, and there's uh so there's pedestrians there's cyclists there's everything in general my understanding of what i've learned here is that the paths were designed for golf carts and golf carts kind of have the right of way, where I'm used to pedestrians have the right of way with everything in Canada, and anything that's uh, motorized or, uh, you know, a bicycle or anything like that would be secondary, but in this case, they decided that that's the way they're going to do it, which is great, it's fine, and so it was a little tough. I remember when I first moved here, one of the first things my wife and I did is we went for like a 45-minute walk. And it was a little unnerving because these golf carts kind of sneak up on you sometimes. But, you know, once you get used to it, it's quite nice. So I love this community with the golf carts. It's so fun. Now, one of the things that you'll see a lot of are iguanas here. And quite often you'll see roadkill iguanas. Iguanas are very prevalent here. Huge iguanas, like the ones that, you know, you go to Mexico and they put the one on your head for pictures on the beach and everything. <laughs> there's a lot. And that's because there's no predators here, and there's no snakes, there's no you know, predators, so they just kind of flourish. So what I love here is if you have a car, you have to go and park over there. If you have a golf cart, you get to park up in the golf cart parking, which is kind of right in the plaza. There was two people backing up right when I was trying to get in, and so I decided I was going to back out and just wait for these people to pop out. And you'll see what I mean by everything happens in Puerto Rico time. I thought, okay, I'm just going to wait for this person to pull out and move ahead. And instead of moving ahead, well, she fed him some of her ice cream and gave him a big kiss. And when they were ready, they decided to move ahead, and that's okay. <laughs> that's how we do it here. So up here, uh, super chill beach vibes. It's Sunday, so everybody's got their beach chairs on their golf carts. People have the tunes going in their golf carts. Most of the plaza is done up with this uh, tile, kind of like a Spanish or Mexican tile. And it consists of retail all along the main level. And then there's two stories with um, residential above. There's a swimming pool up there for the residences. There's about a hundred real estate offices, it seems like, in this plaza. This is the market, they call it the grocery store or supermarket here, and I would say it's more of like a large convenience store, but it's pretty good. Yogan Fruits, if you want your ice cream fix on a nice warm day. You can see they're still redoing some of the, like the ceiling got ripped out during the um, Hurricane Maria. So they're still redoing a few things, a couple of real estate offices. I just wanted to show you this view. From the plaza, there's a pretty spectacular view of the ocean there. Imagine some of the units up above would just have a really great view. 
Um, restaurant down at the end here is called Brasas. And then there's a Flying Pizza or Flying J Pizza, something like that, that uh, does really good pizza actually. Lots of places to eat in the plaza. There's Mexican, there's uh, like an Asian fusion kind of restaurant, an Italian, uh, lots of great food to have, be had. And then on the weekends in the evening, it gets quite busy and that whole gray area gets filled up with chairs and tables and it all turns into one giant outdoor patio with all these restaurants with music and it's it's a blast it's a lot of fun you run into everybody that you know there and just um, really great community there's some closing clothing stores in here as well uh, property management companies etc uh, yeah let's get back in the golf cart yeah uh, if, you, if you notice the little tesla logo on my golf cart it's it's not a tesla golf cart but i just jokingly put that sticker on there because i've been a tesla owner since it up. So now we're going to take the lower road down to the beach area. There's a little beach access that I like to use when I, a lot of times I'll, if I'm not staying right on the water, I'll come drive down and park over here and just go for a beach walk. It's from this beach access to what I call the point out closer to Marbella, but not quite there. It's uh, one mile there, one mile back on the beach. It's a pretty nice little beach. Park. the end of this T road intersection here and if you turn right you get to the marina and the marina is pretty spectacular it's a really gorgeous marina it's for sale right now actually and it has boats all the way from like little Boston whalers all the way up to um, like super yachts 120 feet or well, on yachts big yachts or mega yachts to wait for this person. This is my little beach access route. And it's a really tight squeeze here with this post. There's a little nature walk to the left and then to the right there's this building. And the building is some kind of water or sewage pump or something like that and I find this a pretty nice little place to park when I go to the beach. Get out and hopefully we'll, it's like 20 steps to the beach from here. You can see some of that black stuff on the beach. That is uh, seaweed. It's just kind of like they call it sargasm or seaweed. And, uh, you know, sometimes if it rocks at a certain period of time of the year, it can have some smells. I'm excited when I'm snorkeling. <laughs> now, this is about as calm as I've seen the water here. It's really, really nice right now. It's quite clear. And this is Caribbean Ocean, so it is. High 70s, low 80s, well, probably high 70s right now for water temperature. It's very nice. It wasn't uh, shocking to get in or anything like that. It was really nice. So just enjoying a little swim here. I'll kind of breeze through some of the snorkel <laughs> adventures. I love snorkeling. I just love, it's like being in a giant fish tank and just see how clear it is. So I'll get out, towel off. 
head back to the golf cart and I want to go and show you the other beach so we're going to take the golf cart there and I'll kind of show you the the community and the houses and everything around while we go to the second beach take that tight little tour again so the second beach that I'm going to show you I mean they affectionately call it secret beach I don't know if it actually has a name if you look at it on Google Maps there's a secret beach like another beach away so I'm not sure if this is actually secret beach so this is the road if you turn left here you get to the marina we're gonna go straight and around all the marina homes so we're kind of staying on the marina level and just going around all these uh, properties while we get to the beach a lot of pedestrians out, a lot of you know cyclists. So the Corvette Club was out for a little Sunday drive. Brand new one, a couple years old, really old, <laughs> classic. Just need an old Stingray behind them and they'd be fine. And this section doesn't have any uh, golf cart, dedicated golf cart road, so golf carts just go on the road in this section. look at the marina as we come up on the left side and yeah, lots of again gated communities here so you got gated communities within gated communities I'll show you one as we come up on it this road if you take it to the right it goes up a small hill back up to the main road it's one of those communities with the gated community within the gated community Fascinated by that, the double gate. So all these homes on the left are single family homes on the waterfront. And then now coming up on the left is actually a condo development on the harbor as well, like on the marina. Some people say that the seaweed, or sargasm, as I've heard it called, in the kind of late spring, summer, maybe even into the fall, when it gets hotter and more humid, that it starts to rot or go down to the bottom of the ocean and rot or something, and it starts to stink. And You know, I really found one area that I could say truly does stink quite a bit by the marina but I don't I know that they've been doing some work with the um, removal of it and management of it and I honestly haven't found it bad right now but uh, I'm interested to see what it's gonna be like in the uh, summer there's the marina so most of those uh, are townhomes and single-family and the, the townhomes and single-family all have their own boat slip so if you you know, and the real estate prices, I gotta say, are pretty, pretty good. Like, these townhomes with three or four stories with a rooftop and a garage and your own boat slip are in the neighborhood of, I've seen them as low as like 850, 900 and going up into the 1.5, 2 million range. But I, I gotta say, pretty good. If you wanna live on a marina in the Caribbean, it's, it's a pretty good option. A couple of restaurants on the left, there's Chinchos and Pescaderia. I know I sound very white when I say things like Pescaderia, I'm not using an accent. But, um, a little shortcut up to Harbor Lights Road, or sorry, Harbor View Road. And these are all single family homes. This is where we get into the larger lots and single family, larger single family homes. And these cars are just turning off the main road. So we're going to take a left here. quick left right away into an area that 
I call it Shell Castle because there's a Shell Castle road over here. And the roads are really nice in this area. The lots are really big. Lots of great, uh, you know, I, it's got kind of a Hawaii vibe to it where the, there's lots of lushness, lots of foliage, lots of, you know, jungle kind of to it. It's really... So as you keep going through this road, on the left, you'll see some pretty nice homes. There's some new development as well coming up as in here. It's actually a quite a nice view of the harbor and the plaza coming up on the left as well. Again, lots of bush and thick jungle foliage. of renovation going on in this area I noticed. There's renovation trucks parked to just about every home on the weekdays. Getting work done, updating, renovating. A lot of this development was done in the 80s. So it's really 80s and 90s and it's just starting to show its age. You know, it could really use some renovations. Here I'll show you the view here out to the left. Boats in the harbor, the marina. The big pink house, we call it. It's a, it's a spectacular location. Now, everything here on the right and left has an absolutely incredible view of the ocean. Uh, most of these look like a bungalow on the left. But they go down probably four or five more floors below. So it's like a four-story walkout <laughs> that starts with a bungalow on the main level. Pretty pretty spectacular location. And this is where we're gonna do at the bottom of this road. We'll take a left and go and park and see the beach. weather here, I mean coming from Canada where the weather varies 60 degrees, 70, 80 degrees from from summer to winter, I'm going to just park right here and then we'll walk down this little path. It's a little parking area right here. But the, the weather here doesn't change by more than one degree every day. It's incredible how just stays one degree warmer or cooler every single day. 82, 83, 82, 83, 83, 82. That house is incredible as well. They've uh, just constructed that. It's really gorgeous. Now you'll see some generators up here. The, you know, the, the grid system, the electrical grid system definitely needs work in Puerto Rico. You've probably heard about that. Uh, we do get power outages quite frequently. I have to say the internet is pretty good in most places. It's uh, you know high speed. I get 300 megabits. It's good. Um, I, I've also heard of people who get gigabit speed um, internet. So there is some fast uh, fiber optic internet in the area. But uh, most of the single family homes will have a generator that will just automatically kick in if the power goes out. Some of the condominium complexes or buildings have generators as well and that's pretty nice when the power goes out so it can run your fridge and whatever else. Now you'll see the signs there for rip current. This beach is like absolutely gorgeous. It's like something out of a movie scene. It is unreal. Um, but they put up these signs because just a couple of weeks ago there was actually a drowning here from um, a family that was visiting and uh, you know somebody got caught in the rip current and got pulled out and couldn't get back in and unfortunately passed away so happens a lot in the ocean so you have to really know your stuff and be careful and this just happens to be one of Can the I most take a calm picture? beach days and Can I take a picture photo? Swimming. Yes, Thank you. Uh, this couple yeah. is wow. doing some fishing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. Super nice people. Uh, a lot of locals on this beach. I mean, lot. There's like six people on the beach on a Sunday, so 
you can have pristine unencumbered beach i mean it is it feels so natural here it doesn't feel like it's all resort beach and uh, the sand is wonderful here and it's just absolutely spectacular there's some of those houses that were like bungalows on the cliff anyways let's jump in the water and see if we see some more fishies i found this kind of shoehorn coral and just beyond that i found quite a few fish down here there's one Again, I was only maybe 40, 50 yards out from the beach to get to this coral. And, you know, decent visibility. It's a little milky, a little murky. I mean, there are way better places to go snorkeling. This is just kind of the, the local snorkeling hole. But uh, if you go over to Fajardo or over to Vieques, apparently there's some spectacular Caribbean um, snorkeling. This is just kind of you know, what, what we get right out our back door, so to speak. So some cute little fishies. And it was at this point that I kind of thought, you know what? I think I'm kind of done for the day. I'll take one little dive down and maybe I'll follow this one little fish home. There's my happy face. <laughs> I'll follow this little fishy home and yeah, we'll just swim back to shore here. Oh, it's just, I mean, the water is absolutely great. So we're gonna wind up the video now. Uh, thanks for taking the journey. If you're from Palmas, hopefully this gives you something to remember it by. If you've never been to Palmas, definitely come and check it out. We'd love to see you. And uh, thanks for watching.